To our esteemed newlyweds and cherished guests, I'd like to take this moment to extend heartfelt congratulations to the groom, from Nick and Sam, rest assured, they're doing well, except for the daily ritual of gazing at daddy's photo and shedding tears, the shift supervisor abruptly seized the microphone from Maria's grasp, redirecting it to the designated runners, in the secluded back room of the restaurant. He forcefully pushed her onto a small sofa amidst cardboard boxes, plastic water packs, and assorted items, are you out of your mind, he bellowed, unable to contain his frustration, what kind of spectacle is this, what do you think you're doing, being a mere provincial star, do you comprehend the caliber of events we host here, Maria stole a glance at him, her breath shallow and rapid, her nerves on edge, she was acutely aware of her former status among the elite, where grand halls and lavish parties were commonplace, marked by a plethora of zeros in the budget, why don't you say? Something, Daniel's voice pierced the tense silence, if you don't rectify your foolish behavior immediately, I'll not only terminate your employment, but I'll ensure your banishment from the service industry, say farewell to decent wages and generous tips, you'll fade into obscurity Maria, her composure slowly returning, uttered calmly, that's my husband, with the initial shock subsiding, clarity dawned in her mind. She affirmed her status, acknowledging Daniel's unspoken inquiry, he's been dead for almost two years, and he's back again, are you insane, or what, Maria was laughing nervously, her voice trembling with incredulity, you have to be kidding, she said, bringing up Daniel's name in the midst of the intense craze, Daniel approached Maria with a disdainful motion, his demeanor unwavering, his tone was suspect as he asked, did you sneak a drink, I haven't touched a drop, Maria snapped back, I don't drink at all, Daniel changed tack, his fury building when he refused to go any deeper, who turns a typically composed subordinate into this at upscale banquets, he murmured aloud, it's enough, just as you were spewing all that trash, you will now publicly apologize, we'll think of a reason, maybe a trial of young forbearance, let me go, Maria's resistance grew stronger as her panic suddenly shot through her, I refuse to comply, I promise not to speak to anyone else, Daniel yelled, fine, his tone revealing his frustration, think about this as your own choice, you are welcome to depart. Remember to pick up your termination documents from HR, your flawless performance history here will guarantee a warm reception elsewhere, Maria tuned out Daniel's words, her fury propelling her into action, in a fit of rage, she shed her waitress uniform, discarding it into the trash without a second glance, hastily donning her civilian clothes, she snatched her bag and bolted from the restaurant through the rear exit, when she fled, a bulky figure lunged toward her, attempting to intercept her. Escape, Maria, drawing on her past athleticism, skillfully evaded the grasp, maneuvering through the cluttered backyard, with swift agility, she scaled towering structures, exploiting her pursuer's lack of agility, within moments, she vaulted over a two-meter fence and disappeared into the unknown, driven by the urgency to evade capture and by her self-precious time, deep down, she harbored no illusions, she knew that sooner or later, they would track her down, calculate her next move, and likely seek to eliminate her now, Maria's sole focus was her children, her beloved boys, her treasures aged three and six, she had to safeguard them, to extract them from this perilous situation, she sprinted with all her might, pounding down the road, darting through a grove of trees, and hurdling the fence of a nearby park, pausing briefly, she deactivated her cell phone to evade detection, then resumed her frantic flight, feeling like prey pursued by relentless hunters, her desperate flight led her to a bustling shopping center, inside, she maneuvered swiftly, darting through the crowded aisles, ascending the escalator to the third floor, passing by stores, a cafe, a game area, and a movie theater, she entered the restroom, where she quickly altered her appearance, shedding her recognizable traits, taking a moment to catch her breath, she calculated that she had bought herself a precious 10 to 15 minutes head start, if they didn't arrive within that time frame, she could flee, home, pack urgently, and escape once more, it was the only option left to her eight years prior, Maria, then a recent graduate from pedagogical university and a promising skier, had crossed paths with her future husband, their encounter marked a pivotal moment, a watershed between her life before and after him, back then, she believed him to be her guardian angel, a beacon of joy and fortune heralding unconditional happiness, how bitterly mistaken she had been, their meeting had occurred at a 
banquet commemorating the anniversary of the sports school where she had recently secured a coaching position, this esteemed institution boasted a reputation as one of the nation's finest. With coaches commanding handsome salaries, Maria had earned her place there through years of dedication and excellence. At just 12, she had attained the rank of adult ski category, and by 14, she had ascended to the status of a master of sports, her resume gleamed with domestic and international victories, brimming with trophies and accolades, it seemed her future lay bathed in perpetual sunshine, an unbroken vista of happiness and success, fate had charted a different course, or perhaps it wasn't fate at all, but her own doing, Maria pondered this later, reflecting on the decisions we make at life's crossroads, the doors they open or close, in hindsight, it seemed she alone bore responsibility for what transpired. Yet, such introspection came years later, eight years prior, a dazzling smile greeted her, belonging to a tall, athletic man with mesmerizing eyes, Maria's heart fluttered at the sight, melting like butter under the hot sun, allow me to introduce myself, he said gallantly, I'm David, representing the company, one of the founders of this institution, and may I ask your name, his gaze enveloped her, leaving Maria elated, it was him, the man she had yearned for, the embodiment of her dreams, with tender affection, Maria responded, it's a pleasure, how fortunate for me, you have no idea, they proceeded to the bar, where David ordered her a martini with raspberry syrup, they shared whiskey in conversation, the drinks flowing freely, the evening culminated in a lavish hotel room, where they continued their acquaintance in a more intimate setting Maria was well aware of where their encounter was headed, but she didn't mind, her youthful naivety had long dissipated. Replaced by a pragmatic understanding, what did she have to lose if it didn't work out, nothing. And if luck favored her, she stood to gain much, Maria trusted her instincts implicitly, for a long time, she had been on the lookout for a wealthy, independent man who could provide her with everything she felt she deserved, with her undeniable beauty and the meticulous care she took of her appearance, she knew she deserved a partner who matched her charm and could appreciate her accomplishments in life, so, why shouldn't she seek a worthy reward in the form of a handsome, charming, shamelessly? affluent life partner, they would undoubtedly make an excellent couple that morning, as they shared breakfast in the room, it became clear that he shared her sentiments, Maria, you're amazing, David exclaimed, breaking the ice, I'll cut straight to the chase, I'm not one for beating around the bush, time is precious, and I'm not adept at these romantic gestures, but don't mistake it for a lack of desire to spoil you, I'm just a straightforward businessman, Maria nodded, appreciating his candor, I, understand she replied warmly david's eyes lit up when he continued that's what i like about you maria you take things in stride so how would you feel if i asked you to be my wife maria's heart skipped a beat at the unexpected proposal i i'd be thrilled she confessed her smile radiating joy fantastic david exclaimed his excitement palpable let's not waste any time get dressed we're off to meet my parents maria laughed feeling incredibly fortunate David's enthusiasm was infectious as he spoke of their future together, and though she couldn't help. But notice his accustomedness to having his desires met promptly, she couldn't deny the excitement of the prospect of starting a family with him when they prepared to meet his parents, David reiterated his commitment, offering not just his hand and heart, but also a secure future, Maria couldn't help but feel a surge of anticipation at the thought of building a life with him, a life filled with love, prosperity and the promise of beautiful, healthy children, he tends slightly, but Maria assured him, I've got this, give me half an hour, that same evening, the newlyweds arrived at David's parents' house for what could be described as an informal introduction, hello, hello, my dear, David's elderly mother welcomed Maria warmly, treating her as if she were her own daughter, the future father-in-law was equally friendly and courteous, though a bit verbose, the old lady looked to fit the stereotype of the ideal village matriarch in every way, both physically and psychologically, her warmth and kindness reminded Maria of the nice folks she had heard about, oh my, it's almost time your grandfather and I have been eager to see our grandchildren, she said, wiping her hands on her ring-adorned apron with excitement in her eyes, their gazes falteredly locked, and Maria hesitantly raised her hands in an embrace, with shaky hands, the mother-in-law whispered, allow me to embrace you, my darling, Maria, being tall and thin, had to stoop somewhat low to accept the hug, the awkward too, 
Minutes of the familial hug seemed to be spent giving awkward pats and showing affection they barely knew one other, which added to the awkwardness of the scenario. Before their encounter, David had not even told his parents anything about Maria. The elderly woman instantly apologized after regaining her calm and asked, Why am I keeping you standing? Please come to the table, lovely visitors, I've made homemade oatmeal, dumplings, and pies. God has richly blessed us, so let's feast, grinning. Broadly, David took Maria by the arm and ushered her toward the table. His mother smiled proudly as she observed their contentment. Maria nodded as well, pleased with the situation at hand. During lunch, Maria couldn't help but indulge a bit more than usual, feeling the weight of the familial expectations. However, she soon realized that she would have to shed those extra pounds in the coming week, despite the generous offerings. It was impossible to refuse the hospitality of her hosts when they departed from the hospitable abode, Maria couldn't shake off the feeling of being scrutinized by the old woman's sad eyes, she sighed, realizing that refusing any of the offerings would have been akin to turning down a heartfelt gesture from her new family, and so, Maria and David left the welcoming lodge behind, their journey into married life already colored by familial expectations and traditions. Have they lived here for long? Maria inquired when they made their way back, gazing at the conspicuously luxurious cottage village with its high fences, barriers, and tight security, the lavish surroundings seemed out of place for elderly individuals, suggesting a wealth beyond their years, the modest little house they had just left with David appeared like a small boat amidst a sea of opulent yachts, no, no, they used to live in the Russian countryside where I was born, David explained, but once I established myself, I bought them this plot of land and built them this house, it's secure, close to amenities, and they have all the comforts they need around the clock impressed. Maria looked at her boyfriend with admiration, wow, not everyone can care for their elderly parents like that once they're on their feet, the wedding was scheduled for the next month, and David seemed to have everything meticulously arranged, even at the registry office, they were greeted like esteemed guests, with already printed applications awaiting their signatures, as they left, David grinned remarking, get used to it, from now on, you'll only get the best of the best at the highest level, how do you manage it all, Maria marveled, feeling unprepared for the level of prosperity she was being ushered into, it's all thanks to cunning metal, David smirked, that's what the world runs on, you know, Maria soon realized the extent to which her life had changed, the wedding, meticulously orchestrated by a specially hired agency, surpassed all her wildest fantasies, from the extravagant champagne, fountain to every meticulous detail, it was a celebration beyond imagination, as the evening progressed, the fountain continued to erupt with fantastic illumination, captivating the guests for hours, many were already quite tipsy and took the opportunity to indulge in the luxury of bathing in its splendor, laughter, jokes, and merriment filled the air as everyone snapped obligatory selfies, and the hired photographers tirelessly captured every moment with their ubiquitous flashes, it was a Wedding that felt more like a grand spectacle, drawing in all the attendees, with so many people around, Maria found it challenging to recall even a fraction of the faces, but David reassured her, reminding her that they were all the right people, he had informed her the day before, explaining the vast number of acquaintances who were present, despite there being barely more than a dozen relatives and true friends. David insisted that Maria invite all her acquaintances, naturally, no one declined. The invitation, especially considering the scandalous speed at which news of her impending marriage had spread through professional circles you'll be swimming in luxury now, but don't forget us, her acquaintances and friends would jest, expressing their happiness for her. Maria found herself smiling politely, though inwardly feeling a bit annoyed by the repetitive sentiments, of course, I won't forget, she would respond, determined to continue her sports training and competitions, later, when. Maria sought a moment of respite, she approached her husband, her mind still reeling from the exuberance of the lavish celebration, what about after the children arrive, she asked, her tone tinged with uncertainty, David smiled reassuringly, gently caressing her cheek, we'll figure it out together, my dear, everything will be as you want it to be, he promised, calming her nerves, feeling somewhat reassured, Maria made her way to her parents, who looked on in awe at the extravagant celebration, where, are your husband's parents, her father inquired, curious about the absence, they're hardly ever present, you've seen their fathers, after all, 
The girl shot back, where on earth are they going to sit through such things, they're too old for this already, the father nodded and said, they saw, agreed, and I wouldn't say they're so feeble, spreading her hands, Maria said, I don't know, they must be more knowledgeable, Maria, why are you bothering me? The mother angrily interrupted, why are you concerned? It's simply inhumane, that's it, the dad dismissed, naturally, though, that is none of our concern, what matters most is that you're content, the mother gave Maria a hug, you love him, don't you, not only that, for the sake of it all, of course, mom, said Maria, of course I do, that's okay, though, many blessings to you, my love, great family happiness, the mother cried, her eyes welling up, immediately after the wedding, the couple embarked on a Pacific cruise, everything unfolded like scenes from a Hollywood movie, a luxurious liner, akin to a floating city, offered a first-class multi-room cabin resembling royal quarters, the impeccable service and plethora of entertainment options included pools with seawater, several restaurants, numerous bars, and snack bars reflecting diverse cultures, there was even a billiard club, dance floor, movie theater, and spa center, the list was endless and they didn't have to pay a penny as the bill was covered in advance on an all-inclusive basis, Maria was simply enchanted, all her childhood dreams were materializing before her eyes, her fantasies of marrying a millionaire and living a life of luxury had come true, albeit tactfully refraining from probing into her husband's financial details, now, all that remained was to have children, and that didn't take long, during one of the port stops, Maria felt slightly nauseous at the sight of the tempting cakes brought by the obliging waiter, I'm not having that, go ahead, she waved her hand, senora, I assure you it's the freshest, the waiter spoke in, broken English, however, Maria gave a forceful shake of her head, no, no, please, take it away, David commanded sharply, his furrowed eyebrows saying more than Maria's hesitant self-explanation, dear, what's wrong, do you feel ill, perhaps overheated in the sun, David gave her a worried glance, you're looking pale, she muttered, I don't know, in response, let us return to the vessel, I'm not feeling well at all, once the wealthy patient had been examined, the accompanying physician smiled discreetly, and declined to become involved in the midwife's duty, but he accepted the charge and the handsome gratuity that David gladly gave him, pulling out a handful of cash and picking out a few notes at random, oh, senior, the physician rolled his eyes, may the health and happiness of your little prince be the best, indeed, good day to you, the well-to-do client smiled and told him before leaving, then David raised his glass in a toast and ordered a bottle of ridiculously priced vintage champagne for our son's hair, Maria insisted that nothing bad ever transpired from a drop of superb champagne, even the nausea lessened somewhat, the trip had gone rather well overall, but Maria found the second portion of the voyage quite difficult, the fragrance or sight of sweets or ice cream infuriated her, she smiled, my cravings are weird, I can eat everything but not sweets, that's because you're having a boy, said an old English woman that they frequently saw in the eatery, she had chatted with Maria before, so they hit it off right away, the woman was descended from early immigrants and British aristocracy, who had the courage and insight to flee the United States of America as soon as problems arose, Maria said, that's right, nodding, my hubby has the same sentiments, he genuinely desires an heir, she raised a slender eyebrow and said, are you honored to be descendants of aristocratic English houses, no, Maria shot back, startled by her own tone, I don't think so, the elderly woman said gravely, my dear, one can only speak of being an heir in two cases if someone is next in line for the throne, or if they come from a lineage that is no less noble than the earls, take note of what I just said, little one, she gave Maria a sympathetic, regretful gaze, money alone, even an enormous amount, doesn't elevate one to the cream of society, but these days, everyone does, she remarked, giving the server a polite bow, please bring me a cup of tea, with sugar and lemon, she said with a happy, indulgent, Smile, the nobleman from England corrected him, Maria was already aware that it was Countess Elizabeth, the last surviving member of a once large and prosperous family, there were now only traces of their incredible fortune, yet it seemed to be sufficient for a respectable living, she wouldn't have allowed herself to go on this opulent cruise otherwise, what does your esteemed husband do, allow me to ask, with grace, the Countess resumed her discussion while using a thin silver spoon to stir her, 
T. Maria said business, without thinking twice, he invests his money, owns real estate, and has stock in sporting venues and events, it is what he informed me, baby and mercy, countess, that's quite enough, the countess said, there's no need for such a lovely young woman to be aware of her husband's extramarital activities, the whole fact is that all she needs to know, or rather, what her lawyers need to know is the overall amount of capital and her personal upkeep, prenuptial agreements are meant. For just that, I hope they're still operational, I'm not sure, once more, I'm perplexed, Maria said, I am an absolute ignoramus in all, if so, let's move on from this subject, the countess shook her head, it might appear impolite, tell me, are you happy, please, do you find this short excursion enjoyable, Maria was taken aback, but she soon collected herself so as not to come across as naive, yes. I am very happy with everything, what could be more beautiful than soon becoming a mother, the countess. Gave her a reassuring pat on the arm, a purple silk cloth snugly encircled the countess's own hand, Maria answered, thank you, but she couldn't help but inquire, where do you buy such lovely gloves in Paris, of course, the countess said without thinking, when you're in Paris, you have to come see me, I'll take you and personally demonstrate everything for you, by all means, Maria repeated, flashing her brightest smile. Simultaneously, I considered, my god, I can really afford it now, Countess. Elizabeth had given her card to me at the conclusion of our little excursion, the Countess's initials and last name, her location in Paris, her phone number, and her initials laid out, as if boldly, on a trembling piece of cardboard with gold monograms, the fashion of the day, however, the email address was missing, it seems that the elderly nobleman had not yet given into modernism, after the trip ended, the young couple went back home, well, David went back home, and I went back to this huge, strange house, on the site next door, a true castle the size of which in hectares is known only to God, I tried to walk to its bounds one day just for fun, David pointed out the location of the fence to me, saying it was over there, gesturing with his palm toward the woods, I saw berries and mushrooms, weathered horrible storms, and almost got lost, but I never discovered a fence, I complained to my husband in the evening, but he just laughed and said if I wanted to see where our property ended. So badly, he'd send someone to clear the road with a bulldozer, no, but it's risky, I answered, what if someone walks through these woods and gets into the house, no one's getting in anywhere, David chuckled, why are there guards present, nothing could escape the garden, not even a fly, the boundary between the woodland and the well-manicured garden, which resembled a typical English park, was defined by a massive green arch, I needed several months to thoroughly inspect all the hallways, closets gallery spaces, attics, pantries, and other obscure areas of this enormous estate, we each had an indoor and an outdoor pool, of course, in addition to the hammam and sauna, we had a few servants' quarters, which were essential for our crew of twenty, and a few other outbuildings and constructions in the garden, such as a gazebo and whimsical sculptures made of rapidly growing bushes, indeed, you could live your life here and not miss anything at all, it was not strange to me that doctors were visiting our home immediately during my pregnancy, everything was going great, they opted for a home birth, fully prepared with various medical equipment and a makeshift hospital room, everything unfolded seamlessly, almost as if rehearsed in advance, Maria, undaunted, transitioned into motherhood swiftly alongside David, welcoming a healthy and well-fed 3-5 kilo baby boy named Tim Nick, David, elated beyond measure, couldn't contain his joy, promptly inviting half the town to celebrate, however. Maria, feeling overwhelmed, questioned the sudden influx of guests. Worrying about potential illnesses and the fragility of their newborn, despite her reservations, David insisted on showcasing their newborn pride and joy, assuring Maria they would keep him at a safe distance from the crowd, reluctantly, Maria relented, hoping for the best outcome as the festivities unfolded, Maria found herself tending to their newborn, excusing herself early from the gathering. She remained resolute in her commitment to nurturing their child, declining offers from numerous nannies and opting to handpick only two trusted caretakers despite complaints of minimal workload from the hired help. Maria insisted on being hands-on, relishing every moment spent with her son, from feeding to bathing, she immersed herself in the joys of motherhood, even relishing walks through their expansive estate until Nick reached six months old, initially sidelined from her passions and career. Maria eventually found herself drawn back to her former routine, reclaiming her dedication to 
Fitness and work, amidst the tranquility of their life, Maria found herself pregnant once more, and soon, the family welcomed another bundle of joy. David, ever doting, showered Maria with extravagant gifts, from a chic red Mercedes to a dazzling diamond necklace. Despite his demanding business schedule, David prioritized family time, often whisking them away on vacations abroad leaving their children in the care of trusted nannies despite occasional absences due to business commitments, Maria never harbored feelings of jealousy or neglect from David, instead, she cherished the moments they spent together as a family, reveling in his adoration for their children and his efforts to make memories together. Together, they navigated the joys and challenges of parenthood, creating a life filled with love, laughter, and cherished moments. It was a time of enchantment, those years that Maria held dear in her memory. To this day, despite what ensued later, those moments remained the most beautiful of her life, however, trouble, as it often does, arrived unannounced. One evening, David returned home, contrary to his usual jovial demeanor, consumed by a somber and despondent mood, uncharacteristically, he lashed out at the servants, even snapping at their son, concerned, Maria approached him after dinner, seeking to understand the cause of his distress, what's wrong, my love, she inquired, her worry evident, nothing to worry about, darling, David replied, attempting to placate her. With a forced smile, just a rough day at work, that's all, come, let me give you a relaxing massage. Despite his attempt to reassure her, Maria couldn't shake the feeling of unease. Days passed, and the outbursts became more frequent, leaving Maria on edge. Just when she thought the storm had passed, a particularly unsettling incident occurred. David returned home unexpectedly during lunchtime. Hastily packing his belongings and instructing Maria to do the same, we're leaving, he announced. Abruptly, catching Maria off guard, there's no time to waste, pack only what's necessary for the kids. Confused and alarmed by David's sudden urgency, Maria pressed for answers, but David, agitated and terse, brushed aside her concerns, insisting they needed to find a safe haven. When Maria attempted to grasp the gravity of the situation, David's frustration boiled over, unleashing his anger and destructive fury. Caught in the chaos, Maria's mind wandered to a childhood fairy tale, where a treacherous troll's magic mirror brought about calamity, the shattered glass on their once pristine floor resembled fragments of that cursed mirror, reflecting the turmoil that had invaded their once idyllic life, and in that moment, Maria realized that their fairy tale had taken an ominous turn, far from the enchantment they once knew, David drove at a high rate of speed. Ignoring Maria's warnings about the dangerous nature of driving with their kids in tow, he smoked anxiously, his activities. Hidden and quiet, Maria was nervous, but she accepted the difficult situation and concentrated on consoling their sons in the rear car while silently hoping for their safety. A few hours later, they arrived at an ordinary wayside hotel in search of a place to stay for the night. Once their kids were taken care of, Maria pretended to be normal, sending them to sleep and telling them about the excitement that lay ahead. When finally their sons passed away from tiredness, Maria sneaked a moment to herself on the little porch, sitting with David who was engulfed in the smoke of a thousand cigarettes, Maria quietly set a cup of tea down in front of him, a modest act of consolation in the middle of the chaos, lost in their own thoughts, they sat in quiet, staring at the busy freeway lit up by a plethora of lights, David eventually acknowledged his previous outburst and ended the silence with a brief apology. Maria nodded and took his apologies, not asking for further details since she knew he would give them when he was ready, David's attitude changed as the night went on, displaying a strong resolve, it's time for bed, Maria murmured softly, her confusion evident when David spoke of going away alone, far away, perplexed, she questioned his intentions, only to be met with a resolute silence, despite her unease, Maria sensed that some journeys must be undertaken alone, and when they retreated to the confines of their room, she couldn't shake the feeling of impending change, unsure of. What the future held for them both, he gave a headshake, tomorrow, I'll transport you to the airport, but not from our home, tension was evident in the air as he said to Maria, we don't want them finding out what's going on right away, the silence became too much for Maria to handle, say something, it is not feasible, I mean, I've been there before, she begged, he let forth a sorrowful sigh, I was scorched, all I have left is nothing, really, I have no idea what Maria is doing, how about the vehicles? and the house, all other things will be taken away, 
David wailed bitterly, our only options are to sell and keep the money or save what we can, I'll locate a spot for you, and we'll begin afresh, he added, sounding dejected, he looked into her face, lit only by the dim light from the motel entry lantern, and said, you're not going to leave me, are you, obviously not, no, what topic are you discussing, reassuring him, Maria got up from her chair to give him a hug, deflated, he reciprocated the embrace, I disappointed you, I feel like a failure, he said, shaking with the intensity of the emotion, silence, silence, Maria reassured him everything will work out okay, we'll work together to overcome this, however, nothing will turn out okay, I'm losing everything, he sobbed hysterically, Maria gave his head a gentle pat, you still have us, don't you, her own heart heavy with uncertainty and anxiety, she muttered softly, they were back on the road when daylight broke, in their hour of need, they chose basic lodging at a hotel, eschewing luxury, for the time being, we'll get by with what we have, I've scraped together a little cash, it will hold us over, quickly assuring her David, I'll return for you after selling what I can, okay, let's rebuild together, okay, Maria agreed, though her anxiety lingered, just be careful, call us when you can, he looked around anxiously, feeling like prey under scrutiny, finally, when they boarded their flight, he breathed a sigh of relief, waving to them, from behind the glass windows of the waiting room before disappearing into the crowd, Maria's heart felt heavy as the plane took off, a sense of foreboding weighing on her mind, she couldn't shake off the feeling of impending doom, despite the promise of a fresh start, he reassured her that everything was fine on his end so far, Maria sighed, checked on the sleeping children, and also drifted into an uneasy sleep. The first few days passed quietly, David called her twice, his voice sounding more alert saying everything was fine, Maria couldn't fathom how that could be possible. But they continued corresponding daily, the hotel exuded tranquility, breakfast, lunch, dinner, beach, pool, kids club, all followed a routine, Maria found herself wishing they could stay there forever, if only David were with them, she hoped for nothing to disrupt their peace towards the end of their vacation, David called again, he informed her that he wouldn't be able to join them and they'd have to fly back alone. Maria sighed and began packing, uncertain of what awaited them upon their return. At the very least, she knew they'd have to stay with her parents and sell their belongings to start anew, no one greeted them at the airport, David's phone was unreachable, stirring the same dreadful premonition Maria had felt days earlier, she called his number repeatedly, but the automated voice of the cellular operator informed her that he was either unavailable or didn't answer, the children kept asking for their father, and Maria did her best to reassure them, her own anxiety mounting, she hailed a cab to the train station, where they waited for hours for the next train to her hometown, money was the least of her concerns now, her mind was consumed with worry about David's whereabouts and well-being, on the train, Maria hardly slept, her senses on high alert to every sound and movement, when the phone rang in the morning, she leaped to answer, hoping it was David, instead, it was her mother, to whom she feigned normalcy, not wanting to burden her with the truth of their situation. It was incredibly difficult for Maria's mom not to sense that something was amiss, Maria felt a desperate urge to cry for help, but instead, she forced a smile and recounted the highlights of their supposed wonderful vacation, embellishing with tales of unexpected business that kept her husband from joining them, when their journey neared its end and the familiar suburban scenery passed by outside the window, Maria's heart sank. The weight of something terrible and irreparable hung in the air. Upon reaching their house, Maria noticed a white piece of paper with a red seal affixed to the door, a government seal from the Ministry of Internal Affairs, panic gripped her, but she couldn't let her children see her distress, thinking quickly, she suggested they play a game, pretending to be adventurers sneaking into their own home through a different entrance, the children eagerly agreed, oblivious to the gravity of the situation. Maria led them to a forgotten door hidden in the fence. Overgrown with foliage, with trembling hands, she unlocked it and ushered them into their backyard. When they entered their home, the absence of the usual sounds, the gentle murmur of fountains and streams, struck Maria as unsettling. The house appeared deserted, with closed shutters and an eerie silence enveloping the surroundings. With a sinking feeling, Maria approached the front door, only to find the same ominous notice affixed to it. We can't go in through here either, she informed the 
Children, her voice strained with worry, we haven't forgotten our mittens, Maria reassured the children as they entered the house through the back door meant for the servants, a hidden entrance that seemed to have slipped everyone's memory, Maria was seething with anger by this point, if there had been a notice on this door, she would have torn it off without a second thought, the gas boiler went cold, the water and power went off, and the interior of the house was dark and empty, luckily, Maria was familiar with the area, she turned knobs and switches in the boiler room with a focused precision that brought back heat, light, and water for their house. Before putting the kids to bed, she rummaged through the pantry and found enough food to feed them, she stated in a hushed, tired voice, it's quiet time now, even thieves need their rest. Maria went outside to take a look around the house around lunchtime. She skipped a beat and walked inside David's study, his once orderly workstation was. Now a chaotic spectacle, she felt sick to her stomach when she saw the desk and floor covered with dark brown stains, she resisted the impulse to pass out because she knew she had to keep going for the kids, Maria felt around the broken bookcase and with shaking hands found a cigar box that had an extra set of keys, she made sure everything was safe by locking the study and then collapsed silently against the wall. Stifling her sobbing to keep the kids from waking up, after 30 minutes, Maria started calling David's friends and acquaintances, her voice becoming more and more desperate, are you aware of David's location, I can't get in touch with him now that I'm back from vacation, the identical answer was given to each call, nobody was aware of his whereabouts, they'd not seen him in a long time, so they were perplexed by Maria's desperate questions, not even David's aging parents, who only had one cell phone between them, could provide any information, when Maria realized she was really alone during this struggle, her heart fell even more, the phone had been misplaced amidst the scattered hay, within what the old woman, her mother-in-law, referred to as their hallway, they hadn't noticed its absence for a full day, occasionally missing its presence finally, they decided to reach out to David themselves, typically, he gathered all his updates from the gardener or the cleaner who visited, it seemed futile to contact them, prompting Maria to suggest they check if David was around to avoid any trouble, at least someone would call, she fought the despair within, then, as if timed perfectly, the phone chimed sharply on the kitchen table, drawing Maria's attention, with caution, she answered the unfamiliar call, Maria Vladimirovna, came a dry, official voice on the other end of the line, her heart clenched as Major Robert Bothers from the Department for Important Cases spoke, are you back in the country already, Maria was stunned, yes, she replied cautiously, where are you? From, do we have all the information, the investigator interrupted, we've tried calling you several times with no response, Maria explained weakly, my husband advised me not to answer unfamiliar calls, can you tell me where he is, what's wrong, Maria pleaded, instead of answering, the investigator asked, where are you now, at home, Maria replied, I'll come to you within an hour, don't go anywhere, the investigator instructed, okay, Maria agreed, Placing the phone down, she rested her head in her hands, staring out of the window until Robert arrived, that was the last part of Maria's story she wished to recall, she already felt the weight of what had occurred in her heart, and the investigator's arrival didn't offer any surprises, your husband, David, according to preliminary investigations, committed suicide on July 26, four days ago, the investigator stated bluntly, Maria covered her face with her hands, disbelief washing over her, oh my god, she murmured, trying to compose herself, she lifted her tear-stained face and asked, where is he now, the body is at the investigative morgue, you'll need to come for identification, the investigator informed her, however, I must warn you, his face is badly damaged, facial recognition might not be possible, Maria's voice trembled as she hoarsely asked, is it mandatory, yes, came the heavy reply from the investigator, a heavy, gray veil seemed to envelop the world, drowning everything in somber hues, Maria escorted the children to their grandparents, briefly explaining the tragic news, the grandmother referred to them as poor orphans, while the grandfather simply embraced Maria, urging her to stay strong and assuring her not to worry about the children for now, Maria was deeply thankful for his support, following the morgue identification, Maria could barely bring herself to look at the body, there was little left to recognize, weakly, she confirmed its identity, nodding faintly, the inner vision of that horrific stain lingered, in her mind, amidst endless paperwork and questioning, 
Maria felt a sense of unjust blame thrust upon her, as if the burden of her husband's death wasn't enough, their assets, including her car, were seized. Without a prenuptial agreement, she was informed that half of the car belonged to her late husband in an effort to manage what remained. She sold off valuables, converting the proceeds into dollars and opening a foreign currency account in her name. The notary explained the tedious process of settling debts and determining remaining assets once. Creditors' claims were resolved, essentials for herself and the children were relocated to her parents' home, David's funeral, when finally permitted by the investigation, was modest, if not impoverished, only Maria, her father, and a handful of close friends gathered around a simple, inexpensive coffin, David's parents appeared torn between grief and detachment, leaving Maria with a surreal sense of their presence. In a moment of unexpected candor, David's father-in-law pulled Maria aside, his voice trembling with embarrassment, daughter, we're not truly David's family, he confessed, revealing a hidden truth, Maria stared at him in disbelief as he continued, explaining their shared origin from the same village, distinct from David's biological parents who had led troubled lives that seems like a long time ago, when he was just a boy, what was his masculinity transition like? He sought us out when he went back to his native country and asked us to act as his kin and substitute parents. The old guy waved helplessly as Maria stared dumbfounded at her pretend father-in-law, not knowing just what to say. She managed to finally gather herself and said, You see, I'm in a bit of a situation. All David left behind were debts. I wish I could help, but I worry I am unable to do so. The elderly guy brushed her worries away with understanding, saying, We've talked about this. We've made the decision to sell our house and move back to the village. Whatever is left over will be for you and... The kids, none of it is necessary for us, David had been supporting us on a monthly basis, and we want you to have that too, sweetie, he said, we are aware of the struggles you encounter, David, God rest his soul, is the reason we have saved over the years, the elderly guy thanked the sky with a somber nod, moved, Maria hugged the old couple and gave them a heartfelt thank you before saying goodbye to the little house forever. As promised, everything worked out perfectly, unexpected benefits resulted from the home transaction in addition to David's transferred savings, Maria received large increases to her foreign currency account, she could see a better future for herself and her kids as if a weight had been lifted off her shoulders, but there would be difficulties on the way, a friend recommended attorney first bemoaned the fact that there was no time to make things right, Maria saw that it was all business speak, she had hoped to inherit a sizable share of David's inheritance, but, all she got was a small amount from the estate sale, a small portion of the value of her automobile, and inadequate offers, the rest was gobbled up by creditors whose identities and their interactions with David were still unknown to Maria and something she would choose not to find out, left with the task of securing employment in her field, Maria faced an uphill battle. She realized that her absence from competitive skiing for a year had diminished her professional standing considerably. Rebuilding her career and dreams of Olympic participation seemed increasingly elusive, plans for a fresh start crumbled when a peculiar phone call disrupted her evening, a man claiming to be David's friend and business associate requested a meeting, without hesitation, Maria agreed, eager to glean any insight into the final days of her beloved's life, they arranged to meet in a bustling locale. Opting for a small yet respectable cafe, understanding Maria's current financial constraints when the Unfamiliar man rose gallantly from his seat upon her arrival, Maria couldn't help but feel scrutinized by his admiring gaze, she responded stoically to his compliments, merely acknowledging them with a nod, focusing instead on the matter at hand, cutting to the chase, Maria politely declined any additional offerings from the waiter, insisting on coffee alone, with a strained smile, she urged the man to get to the point, prompting him to produce a stack of papers from his briefcase these, he explained, were lease agreements for bank safes and several accounts in her name, left behind by David, he then handed her a letter, his demeanor shifting as he excused himself, sensing his presence was no longer needed, left alone at the table, Maria unfolded the letter with a heavy heart, revealing David's hurried handwriting on a plain white sheet torn from a diary, in it, he begged her forgiveness, admitting his guilt and offering what little he could to sustain her and the children, he 
entrusted everything he had saved to a man named Andrew, acknowledging it as a mere drop in the ocean but emphasizing its importance in ensuring their survival. Urgently, he implored Maria to leave town upon receiving the letter as Maria sat in the cozy, dimly lit corner of the cafe. The weight of David's words sank in, with a mix of sorrow and determination, she prepared to embark on the path laid out before her. Guided by the scant provisions left by her beloved, the people who've caused my downfall will soon realize I've outsmarted them by taking some of their assets. Are these the documents Andrew will give you? We can't let them realize they've left all this behind. Take all the money with you and transfer it to someone else, parents, girlfriends, anyone. Just ensure it's not in your name. Make sure you follow through on this. If you acquire a car, put it in your name too. Please, just do as I've written for your own safety. Go away. Hide the money, and start over, and I beg you. Be wary of everyone, take care of yourself and the children, give your sons a hug for me and tell them daddy loves them very much, loving you forever, David. After reading the letter, Maria neatly folded it and placed it in her purse before heading towards the exit, her cheeks dampened by bitter tears, she didn't dwell on where to go for long. A close school friend who had relocated to Boston years ago had often urged Maria to join her, extolling the city's beauty and advantages, though initially. Hesitant due to the climate, Maria now saw it as the only viable option, still trusting her friend despite the years apart. Following David's instructions, Maria emptied the accounts and safety deposit boxes, stashing almost all the money in a secret location known since childhood. She kept only what was necessary for settling in, a rental or mortgage for an apartment, a modest car, and some cash as a reserve. She vowed not to touch the principal, preserving it as her children's inheritance. It was safer not to be seen with illicit money thus, Maria and the boys became residents of Boston, Jenna, her helpful friend, guided them, showing them the ropes and often taking the kids out so Maria could attend to matters in peace. She and her husband resided in a spacious apartment within a modern complex near downtown, along with their son, who was around the same age as Sam. Their household also included a large shaggy parrot dog and a few other pets, the boys delighted in staying with Aunt. Jenna, relishing the opportunity to play with their new friend, meanwhile, Maria found herself tinkering with various things, maintaining a good-natured demeanor despite the twists and turns of life, Maria was endeavoring to rebuild her life after facing setbacks, despite her considerable skills, she struggled to find acceptance in any reputable sports clubs. Having lost precious years being only marginally acknowledged by one of the state ski sections accepting the need to start anew, she embarked on a search for part-time employment. Soon enough, she stumbled upon a promising opportunity, organizing one-time trips and events with a service agency specializing in weddings, banquets, and similar festivities. This role demanded not only good looks but also physical fitness and stamina, qualities Maria possessed in abundance. Following a successful interview, she secured a part-time position with the agency, bringing in improved wages, however. This came at the cost of sacrificing most weekends and holidays, often requiring her to travel far from her new residence to cater to events at country clubs, dinner yachts, restaurants, and neighboring towns and villages. On one occasion, she found herself at an opulent wedding in an upscale restaurant on the city's outskirts, reminiscent of her own affluent past nuptials. Despite the stark differences, Maria harbored no regrets for leaving that previous life behind. Save for missing David and lamenting the cruel twist of fate that deprived her sons of their father, however, her world was turned upside down when she recognized, with a surge of anger coursing through her veins, her late husband standing as the imposing groom at that very wedding Maria, seized by a sudden impulse, without understanding why, grasped the microphone from the sound operator's table and uttered cruel words that echoed through the entire hall, in the aftermath, as she sat in a toilet stall, pursued by an attendant. She deeply regretted her impulsive outburst, what had she done, perhaps it wasn't David after all, Maria's certainty wavered, should she return and apologize, was the guard merely trying to restrain her, to help her come to her senses and rectify her rash actions, or was she being paranoid, maybe David was alive, but if so, why had he disappeared, abandoning them, she couldn't bring herself to entertain that notion, for a moment, she sat frozen, consumed by fear and indecision, after what felt like an eternity, Maria cautiously pushed back the stall latch and emerged. 
Into the quiet, empty hallway, the front door creaked, jolting her senses, but it was just a passerby, she realized a session must have ended, and people were exiting, after composing herself, she washed her hands, glanced at her reflection in the mirror, and made a firm decision, with determination, she hurried to the nearest subway station and headed home, or rather, first to Jenna's, who was always there to help with the children, hi, how are you, Jenna smiled and said hello to her pal, today. You returned early, is everything okay, I'm worried about nothing, and I don't feel well, Maria admitted when they sat down to tea, you're doing great right now, what might be a problem for us, reassuring her, Jenna took control of Sam and Ben, thank God, with a sigh of relief, Maria took the glass that her friend had offered her, how's Peter, Jenna gave her an update on her husband's whereabouts while he was gone on a business trip, saying, he's fine, work keeps him occupied, while they talked about a variety of subjects, Maria started getting ready to bring the children home, both families found that living near to the subway made commuting easy and eliminated the need for a transit card, which Maria hadn't even bothered to buy yet, she concluded everything would be okay, she led the kids to the bathroom and then to bed when they got home, she finished up some housework and sat down with a cup of tea in front of the TV, hoping to unwind before going to bed by watching something easy, she had. No idea that Sam had fallen asleep softly and covered her with a plate by mistake, the knock on the door startled her out of her sleep, she sprang up right on the couch, listening nervously to see if it was all in her head, having long before silenced the doorbell to keep the kids quiet, she warily approached the door as long as the knocking continued, but there was no one there when she peered through the peephole. She decided not to open it and yelled, go away, I'll make a police call, the knocking stopped, and there were footsteps, very faint, Backing away, Maria went back to the kitchen to prepare tea because she couldn't escape the anxiety, only to have her tea interrupted by a message on her phone, Maria, please open up as she read the text after unlocking the screen, David, it's me, we must discuss, she said, as if everything had collapsed. She grasped her mouth in amazement as the cup dropped from her grasp and crashed to the ground, feeling like she was unwinding like a thread. She ran to the bathroom in a fog and turned on the water to block off her tears when she sobbed, time blurred, and the night passed by without her realizing, she didn't recognize the hour until she came out of the restroom to see how the kids were doing, her limbs hurting and her heart heavy, she decided to take a sick day from work, she walked carefully up to the fallen phone and muted it, then swallowed three tablets to calm the tempest raging inside her quivering spirit when she got to her couch, she fell slept soundly and deeply, the gentle caress of her child's hands interrupted her comfortable sleep, mom, get out of bed, I have to go to school and Sam needs to go to daycare, her oldest child said, breaking her silence, glancing up at her excited firstborn, Maria opened her eyes, she whispered, do you really want to go to school, not really, Nick whispered back, but I have to, Maria decided on the spur of the moment, feeling surprisingly rejuvenated after the day's events today. Let's take the day off, she said, her son said, can you have doubts on a Monday, you can if you really want to, Maria reassured him, let's go make waffles, they met in the kitchen under a joyously beaming sun, Sam soon followed, and the three of them had a leisurely and enjoyable morning without hurry, Maria gave her employer a call to ask for a few sick days, she also let the childcare and school know, so everyone could enjoy the day guilt-free, enjoying their time together, they took a leisurely stroll in the park, Maria treasured the times they spent together, however, there were still unanswered questions, now, what was she meant to do, she tried not to think about David, attempting to concentrate only on her kids and the nice weather, during their outing, they visited an ice cream parlor, much to the boys' delight, Maria couldn't shake the feeling that David would resurface, and sure enough, another message arrived, inviting her to meet him, she couldn't help but find the emoticons, Belittling, was it necessary to make it seem like he had disappeared, she pondered bitterly, with a sigh, she agreed to meet him later that evening, suggesting a cozy cafe they frequented in the past, Maria wondered how the encounter would unfold and what she would say to her estranged husband when the appointed time approached, Maria arrived early, deliberately positioning herself in a corner, she observed David as he entered, noting the slight change in his appearance, here you are, my dear, he, greeted her when he spotted her at the table, she extended her hand as a caution, but he approached her with a remorseful smile, no darling or similar expressions, are you aware of the experiences I've had, Maria spoke with a stern tone, prioritizing the well-being of her kids, with a heavy groan, 
David collapsed onto the couch across from her, I really apologize, everything was essential, he said. She gave him a look of complete incredulity, she insisted, what does it take to marry someone else? Quietly, his forehead wrinkled nervously as he waved her away, smiling, he begged, you know I only love you, in an attempt to escape notice, Maria, though, did not waver, retorting in a low but determined voice, you don't know anything, how much of a dude are you, how did we manage to live this way, she went on, accusingly, you've kept me in complete ignorance all this time, supposedly for my own good, David started to say something, but Maria interrupted, for my personal benefit, you ought to have chosen differently, not wasted money, not engaged us in questionable endeavors, and not secured the future of our children, Maria said, her tone caustic, now, all my good is our sons, for whom I work tirelessly, and suddenly, my beloved late husband rises again, wanting to tie himself to me once more, probably for my own good, she said with a sardonic grin, when David tried to clarify, Maria angrily cut him off, explanations are not what I desire, if your conscience allowed you to pull off this obscene farce, then forget about your family and discreetly wed someone else. What is there to clarify? David said, I haven't forgotten about you every day. You and the kids cross my mind. You know, this wedding is simply a performance, like everything you touch. Maria snapped back. Clearly frustrated, David gave in and said, now let's consider that, I would think the same thing if I were you, however, his tone changed, making his desperation clear, feeling ashamed. He trailed off, but if you hadn't been there, if you hadn't seen all. This, looking at Maria with a mix of remorse and desire, he said, then after a while, I would have come to you myself, Maria looked up at him, her sour expression slowly lessening, David blurted out, this is my new wife the niece of someone important, as he hurried to explain, in order to escape the situation I'm in, I need his help, a new beginning has been made, we will all be reunited, do you really think so? Maria inquired, letting out a trembling laugh, is this your grand plan to improve your life at someone else's expense, then discard the man you claim to love like a used cup, I wouldn't be surprised if your previous prosperity was obtained by the same fraudulent means, only to deflate like a soap bubble, Maria stated with sadness, David did not say anything more, his eyes glued to the rain outside and his brow knit as he waited for her to retort with more biting criticism, don't even consider returning to the kids or to me, you are dead to them, that's it, no questions asked sneered Maria, triping to bring the dead back to life is pointless, I'm sure you've changed, and the only reason you and I are dead is the suffering, or am I not correct, she posed a challenge, David reluctantly said, no, Maria gave a nod, all right, let's maintain it that way, she concluded, I followed your instructions and withdrew the money you gave me with Andrew, hiding it in a secure location, for our children, it is a fresh start in life, all they'll know about their father is that he loved them, unconditionally, and I'll do my best to raise them to be decent people, that was the last thing he wrote in his suicide note, I'll tell them sometime, isn't that the best representation of their father they could hope for, and when they're older, a nice little startup cash to go along with it, you decide whether or not I should tell them that you are lying, although I don't think it's necessary, I have no power over you, I apologize, you act in accordance with your moral convictions, but you should now give everything careful thought, I implore you, Please, say goodbye and don't phone me again, Maria said, she got to her feet and nodded to her deceased husband, who had come back to life out of nowhere, he was sitting at the table with his head down, nodding attentively at his cup as she exited the cafe, a few years went by, Sam and Nick had grown up and, along with other students of their mothers, were active in sports, namely skiing, Maria had long since moved on from her part-time job as a waiter at other people's parties to something else more suited, she coached a junior ski team, taught in a number of clubs and fitness centers, and frequently traveled overseas to support her young skiers in tournaments, Maria once more experienced success, and her life began to take on a new, peaceful, and enjoyable path, being alone with two teenage boys was undoubtedly challenging, yet Maria had grown accustomed to it over the years, the boys had matured into intelligent and obedient. Young men, the elder was already showing promise as a future master of sports, much like Maria herself in her youth, while the younger was quickly gaining recognition as a skiing prodigy within niche circles, during a trip to Switzerland with their team to witness biathlon races, Nick expressed a keen interest in the sport, yearning to witness the renowned competitions firsthand, following an exhilarating race they watched together. 
Maria and the boys decided to seek warmth and refreshment at a nearby restaurant adjacent to their table sat a figure the boys recognized as the victorious athlete, Jarn Kloss. Despite Maria's initial skepticism about approaching him, Nick insisted on expressing his admiration. Maria, worn down by her son's persistence, relented with a warning. When Nick approached the athlete, Maria couldn't help but reminisce about her own youthful pursuits of glory. Meanwhile, Nick's brother, Sam, displayed a cautious demeanor reminiscent of Maria herself, while also Reminding her of his father's passionate yet stubborn nature, Maria worried that Nick might repeat his father's past mistakes. Their table was soon joined by the athlete himself, introduced by Nick as Mr. Kloss. Maria, taken aback by the unexpected encounter, warmly welcomed him into their company. Engaging in lively conversation over warm drinks, they made plans to ski together the following day. Maria was delighted by the unexpected turn of events, feeling a sense of camaraderie with their Newfound companion, when they were preparing to leave, Maria was taken aback when Klaus spoke to her in English, what a surprise, she exclaimed, to which Klaus sheepishly admitted, yes, but rather poorly, my mother is English, but she lives in France, Maria smiled warmly, well, that makes things much easier, after all, I speak terrible English too, laughter filled the room as they parted ways for the night. The following day unfolded with excitement and joy as Klaus generously shared his expertise. With Nick, explaining the intricacies of biathlon techniques, Maria watched with pride as her son's eyes sparkled with delight. Your son is very talented, Klaus praised, albeit with some linguistic confusion, he could achieve great success among modern biathletes. Maria nodded in agreement, emphasizing the importance of dedication to training, Klaus concurred, remarking on the significance of relentless practice in his professional circle. In a surprising turn of events, Klaus invited Nick to participate in the qualifying round with his coaching group the next day. Excited yet hesitant, Nick expressed doubt about obtaining permission, however, Klaus reassured him, promising to advocate on his behalf. In return, Nick pledged to persuade his mother to attend the gala dinner in honor of their team's victory, a proposition Klaus had hoped to secure by sitting alone the previous night, Maria. Though initially taken aback, agreed to consider the invitation, recognizing the kindness in Klaus's gesture, later, Maria expressed her disbelief about the gala dinner situation, confused about her invitation status, Maria's indignation grew, however, her sons intervened, revealing that she was indeed invited as the guest of honor by the race winner, though Maria hadn't received a formal invitation, she was persuaded by her sons to attend the event. Intrigued by the mysterious circumstances surrounding her inclusion, when Maria stood in their chalet, a knock interrupted the moment, Sam answered the door, returning with a stunning bouquet of roses, nestled within the bouquet was Klaus's business card and a formal invitation to the gala dinner, signed by the head of the International Biathlon Federation. What did I tell you? Nick exclaimed triumphantly, now that's a completely different matter. Maria grinned, accepting the invitation with pleasure. Soon after, an assistant of the renowned sportsman arrived, bearing a large flat box. Mr. Dustin Shiver humbly requests you, madam, the Messenger bowed to accept this humble gift. And he will pick you up at 8 o'clock. Maria knew there was no getting out of it. Inside the box lay a stunning dress perfectly sized for her mom. You look like a movie star. The boys chimed in unison. Behave yourselves in my absence, Maria playfully warned, before departing with Klaus, who exuded sophistication in his sharp black suit and bow tie during their journey to the hotel hosting the gala dinner. Maria inquired about Klaus's companion for the evening, I lost my wife a few years ago. Klaus replied simply, I haven't had a companion for a long time, Maria apologized for her presumption, and Klaus, responding in English, smiled, acknowledging the universal tendency to mask sorrow with a smile. Upon arrival at the beautifully decorated hotel entrance, Maria was swept into a whirlwind of glamour and opulence. Inside, the scene unfolded with a flurry of activity, champagne on ice, cameras flashing and elegantly dressed guests mingling amidst the sparkling marble floors, the gala. Reception commenced, featuring beautifully adorned tables, delectable cuisine, and heartfelt speeches. Amidst the festivities, Klaus graciously accepted his award, delivering a brief speech of gratitude before seamlessly returning to his seat next to Maria, who radiated elegance in her long purple dress. As the evening progressed, Maria and Klaus engaged in lively conversation, culminating in an invitation from Klaus for Maria to visit him and his mother in France, the evening, filled with 
Enchantment and camaraderie ended on a note of warmth and connection, solidifying a bond between Maria and Klaus beyond the confines of the gala. Klaus remarked that Maria's smile reminded him of someone from long ago when he had been invited to France. Despite the passing years, the desire to visit still lingered. Sensing this, Klaus suggested it was time to turn that desire into reality. He painted a picturesque scene of strolling along the Champs-Élysées, taking in the view of the Eiffel tower and enjoying a boat ride on the Seine, evoking a sense of romance, Maria found the idea appealing, considering taking up his offer sometime in the future, however, Klaus was insistent, he wanted her to come soon, not merely as a guest but with a deeper intention, to Maria's astonishment, Klaus expressed his desire for her to be more than just a guest but rather as someone he could introduce to his mother as his future wife, Maria was taken aback, nearly spilling her champagne in surprise. Confirming his proposal, Klaus presented her with a modest gift as a symbol of his enduring love, kneeling before her in a moment of sincerity overwhelmed by the unexpected turn of events, Maria sat in stunned silence, unsure of how to respond, however, the applause and encouragement from those around them prompted her to grasp the significance of Klaus's gesture, despite her initial shock. Maria accepted the box with trembling hands and mumbled a response, her mind racing with emotions in a days, Maria made her way toward the exit, her thoughts in turmoil, Klaus, sensing her unease, caught up with her, expressing concern if he had offended her in any way, assuring him that he hadn't, Maria's mind raced with the weight of the moment and the implications of Klaus's proposal, she abruptly halted, her heart pounding with intensity, you can't do this, she exclaimed, her grief palpable, it's too sudden, too fast, tears welled up in her eyes as she struggled to comprehend the whirlwind of Emotions engulfing her, it's not right, she cried out, fleeing the hotel in a rush, heedless even of dressing properly, however, he pursued her, draping a fur cape over her shoulders, an action that only added to her turmoil, though she hadn't made any attempt to retrieve it from the closet, forgive me, Klaus pleaded, his gaze locked with hers, but I couldn't let this opportunity pass, I fell in love with you at first sight. Truly, Maria's response was laced with skepticism, maybe I don't believe. In love at first sight, she retorted, her voice tinged with seriousness and quick, rash marriages, I understand, Klaus responded earnestly, I'm not rushing you in any way, I just want you to know that I'm serious, as they stood in the aristocratic surroundings, Klaus offered her insight into his lineage, tracing his ancestry back to two ancient, dignified noble families, English and Austrian, good day to you, dear Maria. He bid her farewell courteously, I hope to see you tomorrow, Maria managed a smile, her thoughts still swirling, I think we will, she replied softly, see you then, with a wave, Klaus watched when the cab disappeared around the corner, leaving Maria to grapple with the weight of the ring she now held, carefully opening the box, she beheld the exquisite, unmistakably old ring, adorned with a large, blue oval stone, the intricate patterns surrounding the stone bore the initials of two English letters, bewildered, Maria pondered its significance, her mind awash with questions. Two days later, as they departed for St. Petersburg, Maria found herself feeling calmer and more optimistic, saying goodbye to Claus, she promised him that she would certainly visit Paris in the spring, he assured her that he would send an invitation and arrange a special visa for her, but Maria, confident in her ability to secure a visa herself through the sports federation, reassured him that it wouldn't be a difficult task, their discussion turned to the purpose of her visit, not for competition, but to meet his mother and him, Klaus smiled, emphasizing the distinction between a visit for leisure and one for competition, ultimately, they agreed to plan the trip for spring break and bid each other farewell, back home, life resumed its usual rhythm of work, training, competitions, and school for Maria, meanwhile, Nick received an invitation to train with a Swiss biathlon coach during summer vacation, a prospect that filled him with excitement, however, Sam's behavior seemed to take a sudden turn, one day, he returned from school, barricaded himself in his room, and remained there until evening, refusing to attend practice, concerned, Maria questioned him about his unusual behavior, but Sam brushed off her inquiries, claiming he simply didn't feel well and requesting to skip school the next day, despite Maria's attempts to comfort him, Sam remained distant, pulling away from her, the following morning, Maria had to leave for class, leaving Sam alone at home, when she 
baked pancakes and prepared to escort Nikita to school, Sam silently ate his breakfast then, out of the blue, he revealed that a man claiming to be his uncle had approached him at school, asserting that he was his father, Maria's worry peaked as she questioned Sam about the encounter, to which he reluctantly revealed that he had encountered the man sitting on a bench, a stout figure with a beard, why didn't you inform me immediately, have you informed your mother, when Sam related his experience with the man claiming to be his father, Maria interjected, her concern obvious, Sam hesitated and clarified that, despite his claim that his father had died years ago, the man had called him by name and insisted he was his father, the man persisted, telling Sam that he was wrong and showing him a picture of himself and Maria when they were much younger, Sam was shocked to see this in an effort to soothe Sam, Maria offered to show him his father's death certificate as evidence and reminded him of the trying times they had gone through, Sam studied the document carefully, accepting its veracity but not buying into the stranger's assertions, what does this man want, with a trembling voice full with uncertainty, Sam asked, dear, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, Maria answered, encircling him tightly in her grip, but I promise you, I won't let anyone intimidate us or come between us, with a slight smile, Sam took comfort in his mother's comments, Maria showed up at Sam's school early, the following day in the hopes of seeing the enigmatic man. She searched, but couldn't find anyone who looked like her ex-husband, she waited day after day, getting more and more nervous, at last, she caught a glimpse of him on Friday, while he was seated close to the school's entrance on a bench, gathering her bravery, Maria walked up to him, she said, hello, David, in a steady voice despite her internal conflict, his eyes darted from her face as he winced. She could see the evidence of binge drinking in his unkempt appearance, she pushed, what do you want? With Sam, he grinned and asked, what do you think, my son is he, is it impossible for a father to interact with his own family members, she gave a head shake, he's not aware of you, he is unfamiliar with you, yes, his father has passed away, he shot back, why do you frighten him, along with David and Nick, I want him to know who I am, with a hint of rage in his voice, David said, no, that's not possible, they are unable to recall you, you have been impeding our communication, are you not, Maria cut in, her voice acerbic, however, you had changed your name on all of your documents when I last saw you, David grudgingly acknowledged you recently got married, so what's changed everything, her former spouse angrily answered, I already have a divorce, it was unsuccessful, what are your current plans, David questioned incoherently, with a whisper, just a little bit of everything, Maria chuckled, you've never been able to explain the nature of your activities, Maria stated, listen carefully, in a harsh end severe tone, this is all I'll say about it, don't interfere with our lives, don't put pressure on my kids, and don't try to bring the past back to life, it will only be harmful, I'll report you to the police for harassing my minor child if you don't stop, David gave a docile nod, just give me some money from what I gave you with Andrew, and I'll give it all back, I swear, he said, that money is for my sons, Maria shot back, not a penny of it has been taken or spent by me, and you won't have it, Hey there, it serves as their pillar and security system, it doesn't make up for the absence of a father in their lives, when you did those evil things, what was going through your mind, you have to pay for it in the end, I no longer consider my children, Maria firmly said, go and don't ever come back, or I'll find a way to deal with you, with a determined gait, she turned and headed for the school porch, they were met by the pleasant spring air of Paris, which was full of trees and bushes in bloom. Every corner and shop window seemed to be covered with an endless display of flowers, creating a riot of hues and fragrances, Claus welcomed them to the airport with beautiful bouquets of dainty daffodils, welcome home, he said, how was your flight, it went well, Maria grinned, not even really tired, Maria and her sons were amazed by everything they saw as they climbed into the car and navigated the streets and boulevards of the historic city, occasionally, they would remark in awe, look how beautiful. It is, Claus, pleased with their responses, sat behind the driver and explained and talked about different sites as they traveled through Paris and eventually arrived at a location in the fields there, they were treated to breathtaking views of limitless hills, meandering paths, and tidy homes tucked away like playhouses along the road, the car came to a stop close to a gorgeous, huge gate encircled by bushes and flowering magnolia, past the gate, a tiny path paved with tiny white pebbles wound. 
through the park to an actual castle that looked like something out of a Middle Ages textbook. Welcome to the Chateau de Martin, Claus said somberly as he let Maria out of the car. Inside, every piece of furniture was sleek, exquisite, and in perfect harmony with their conception of the estate and the life of a true aristocrat. The butler and footman invited the family to dinner after they had showered and made their way to the spacious downstairs room, where a large table was already prepared. A short while later, an elderly woman in a wheelchair with straight backs and all white hair was wheeled in by a maid dressed in uniform and whites, Claus said Maria let me introduce you to my mother, holding up Countess Elizabeth, Maria's eyes grew wide when she recognized the elderly woman from her Mediterranean cruise wedding with a twinkle in her eyes, the Countess said, of course, it was, in a somewhat elderly voice, Claus reached out to her and said, and this is my dear Maria mom, can you? Recall, I informed you about her, complete with dear, giggled the countess, I remember everything perfectly well, I am honored to already know this lady, the countess said with a kind grin to Maria, do you remember me, my dear, oh, of course, I remember you, Maria said, moving in closer to give the countess's hand, which was still wearing its unaltered silk glove, a kiss, and also hoping for your help in the choice of accessories, yes, without a doubt, the countess laughed, I also haven't forgotten that. What is the number of years since our little adventure together? I'm afraid there are quite a few, Maria said delicately, Claus observed them, wondering how these two very special women could have known one another, my boy, if you behave yourself, one day your lady and I will tell you the story of our acquaintance, the countess remarked, turning to face him, perhaps Nick spoke to Sam in a low voice, look, I don't think we know anything about our own mother yet, they all laughed heedlessly. Furthermore, we're not alone, in return, his brother grinned, but our new life apparently will be very interesting and exciting, and our mother will finally be happy, Nick continued, that's true, she deserves it more than anyone else in the world, Sam replied, Maria gave her sons an appreciative smile, thank you, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.